Hey Saints fans, welcome back to the film study where today we're going to take a look at Nate Shepard. Now this one is probably not going to be as long as some of our previous ones. And reason being is after going through some of the tape, we're going to go over them. But I don't know if, uh, again, I'm not trying to come out negative on this one. I'm just curious what role they envision him in and see how much playing time he actually earns. Now I do have what I think are some really good notes on Shepard. But I'm very curious to see what you think after we go through several of his plays and talk about how he was used laws in New York, what he did well, what he didn't. For those that don't really know about him, what, 6'3", 315-pound guy, plays mostly on the inside, going to be a two-eye that we're kind of looking at here. Potential use for New Orleans, but you also just brought in another guy in Saunders, who I think is probably the lead in that, but rotational pieces are never a bad thing, and, and Shepard could pop out. This will be his sixth year in the league coming into this particular season. So let's go ahead and knock this bad boy out. We're going to take a look at some of the tape. So number 97 is who you're looking at right now. We're going to start with him on the beginning. Now, in terms of where he typically lines up, this is kind of the main spot, which is right here. For those who don't remember your defensive line alignments, this is what's called a two eye or two inside. It's a shade. The opposite side would have been a three right here. And then you've got the one, you got the zero. And y'all get the picture. We go through all these different ones. Why this is a two eye and this is straight up two. Y'all can argue about yourself. That's just the numbers. That's just how it is. Now, on this one, we're going to have a double team failure, but we're going to talk about how he fails and why. There are definitely some positives I like in his gameplay, but this is not going to be one of them. And the simple reason is he does not break this double team, just basically what it is. So what you end up having here is the offensive line using what's called same foot, same shoulder. So F-S-S-H. So same foot, same shoulder. He needs to attack inside to it. So he wants to drive to the inside portion of this and then use the drop leg technique to try to split it. The drop leg simply being as it would sound, you're going to take your base, lower it and anchor yourself. Now, why would we do that? What you basically do is you take your body, look at the little stick man revs drawing, and you're going to plant that back leg and then you're going to bend and drop this other one. Now, I know it looks absolutely ridiculous, but basically think of yourself as planting a leg behind you and kind of twisting and contorting your body to the side, and you're basically locking out. What that is doing is, from a just kinesiology, body mechanic standpoint, is when you're going against someone straight up, legs bent everything, you have less leverage than if you were to turn and lock out your body. Think about you trying to make your body into one long extended pole. To do that, you drop the inside knee, you lock out the back leg, and you break through with your inside shoulder and inside arm. He's not able to really do that here. He ends up trying to fight through and gets completely washed out in the double team. So the technique to split that, don't really get to see it on this particular play. But again, this is just a uh, one particular example. This does not mean that we're going to just write him off completely. Let's go to a few more plays here. Again, look at him here. Now he's lined out a little bit further out. We are almost, so we're a little bit past a three this time, actually, because we're lined up over on the tackle. I don't want you to take a look at this one. And this is going to be him doing backside versus the outside zone. For those who've been following the channel for a while, y'all been hearing about backside or outside zone for a long, long time. So hopefully y'all know what it is. So I actually really like this play backside as a trail. Now, because he's not the primary defender, you're not going to see a lot of, you know, action from him. But what I do like is outside zone run. So we see all of our good friends here heading on this way. So what do we need to do? Well, now that you got an offensive line that's crossed your face, what you're going to do is attack this shoulder and then shoot him past you, see if you can get behind him. It's exactly what you do right there. Now, it came a smidge late. I mean, and just a smidge late. Like, it wasn't even that bad. I don't think that I would say that that was a problem necessarily. Just a smidge late to release there. Get that, hit it a little bit quicker, attack that shoulder, get him out the way, and then accelerate down the line, which you want to see. But really good job there. Now, just accelerate as you go down and try to make a play on the ball. 
In general, pretty good one, though. We're going to look at a couple of more plays here from him in the same drive. But yeah, I think the initial there is good. You want to see it get finished a little bit better. Now, this is another rep that I like. He doesn't get to the quarterback a little bit slow. But one positive I see a lot when I look at his tape is he has violent hands, strong hands when he comes out. Now, operating from the two eye again here. Now, watch those hands. Just strong, violent. Doesn't able to break three, uh, break through. One thing that he struggles with is maintaining and winning. So initially, I love the win here. Swipe, that's strong, man. You can literally see the offensive lineman's hands get swiped completely off. But now he has to take advantage of that. He has to use this new momentum and leverage, but instead locks out immediately. So one thing that I would have liked to have seen here, if we're talking about a pass rush technique, the swipe was great. We love the double swipe. Take that left arm, extend, lock out, and then use that to then drive. You used to see Jonah Rankins and David on Yamada for New Orleans use the same technique. You want to swipe, get those arms away from you, and then bam, shove, I mean, Punch him dead in his chest with your hand and extend. Lock it out. Again, we want to talk about creating leverage. That pole effect we're talking about with the drop leg. Same thing, but in a shorter variant, just upper body power. Doesn't lock it out. Offensive lineman does a really good job of re-engaging, taking back that half-man relationship, and he ends up not really getting the pass rush he was looking for. But the initial win is great. Violent hands. Good. We got to lock out there. We got to attack that chest. We got to get him on his back. If you don't get him on those back heels, he's going to do right what he does here. Look at him. Exactly what I'm wanting Shepard to do, the offensive line does. Now, he's got control. He took the chest. He's established a solid anchor. He's not on the back of his heels. He's got the leverage and control there. It's a good recovery by the guard. Shepard loses it. But the violent hands, these are little things that maybe you can improve on technique, get better on. And let's take a look at a third play from the same set so i really like that second rep it just needs to get cleaned up little things that got to get better now this one i included is it's some are going to say it's not fair others will say maybe it is so this is a third and super short they're basically going to sneak it up the middle now what i want to see my one my nose or even my two i do is i want you to attack low and i want you to go straight for that hip i want you to break the gap go for the hip and then rely on the guys behind you if anything gets passed, basically you need to fill the gap and drive forward. You're not necessarily trying to penetrate, but you're trying to stall and let everybody else come help you out. But instead, watch what happens. Look at this. This is woof. No, bad, awful, terrible. Why? Well, let Rev explain. Pad level. Sir, it is third and short. And everybody in the chat knows one rule about football, even if you've watched football five times your whole life. What's the rule, everybody? In fact, comment it right now. What is the rule in football about pad level? Low man wins. Situational football. Be aware of what is going on right now. He comes out to this high stance and gets absolutely driven back three yards. You on the interior have got to find a way to have an impact and this is an immediate loss that you set up yourself. Why is your arm cradling? Like, it's like you're trying to like baby the guy, like he had a bad day. His girl just broke up with him, and you're patty caking him on the back. Simply not acceptable. If you're going to be a front... I expect more from my trench, guys. If you were on the front lines, treated as such. All right, look at it from this angle. Same thing. You can see almost an entire upper torso... Not only does he have a double team that he needs to be attacking here, but from the high pad level, he's got absolutely no shot, completely washed out. You've got to get down low. Create leverage. Leverage allows you to create drive. Just didn't happen here. Just did not happen. Anyway, let's move on to another play. We're going to move on it's just a little bit. Oh, man, there's just there's some good notes here, but there's also some that just make you go, ah. All right, another play from the two eye. He's on the inside here. We're going to have another double team. Better job this time. I would say that he initially loses, but he does a good job to recover, not uh, concede a lot of ground, and good job. So remember, same double team, but the offensive line is going to release pretty early, and that's okay. So they're going to release early. He's got to break it. So 
Again, we don't really see that inside attack. We don't really see that splitting the double team. We don't see that drop leg technique or anything, but he doesn't give up a ton of ground. Now, he's got a really wide base here. Look at this, man. This is an extremely wide base, and this kind of speaks to his power, if I'm being honest. That's his leg there, and that's his leg there. He has got a super wide base here. The fact that he doesn't give up a lot of ground is actually kind of impressive. I'm not going to lie. This shows the strength we're talking about. I want to look at this wide angle real quick. Look at his lower body base. Snap. Look how wide he is. It doesn't seem maybe as wide because of the angle here, but you saw from the other one. That's how wide he is. Now, he's basically doing like an offensive lineman would. He's establishing the anchor. He does a good job to fight through some of this contact. And as soon as the second offensive lineman, the one to his right, moves to the second level, he does a good job to reestablish control right here. Reestablishes. See him peeking? Let's get rid of it. Head across. So he loses initially, but good recovery there. Doesn't give up a ton of yards. I'll take that play. You know, those double teams are tough, man. I don't care who you are. If you tell me, if you're watching this video right now and you say that you can take on these NFL double teams just easy peasy, well, I'm just going to call you a bull-faced liar right now. You can't. It's tough. And you got to give him credit because it is hard. All right, this time, I love what he does. This is a very good play. Number one, what do I talk about? Shepard having that I love violent hands. Look at the hands right there. Get it in there and engage. Love the strength he's playing with. He crosses the face of the offensive lineman to attack the gap. You'll see that he's backside here. This is a backside player. The play is going this way. He's a backside defender. He's got to cross the face and get in this gap. He has a really good job, and it all starts with those violent hands. Watch. Cross, bam, attack. Look where that left paw is, right there on that big shoulder. What are we doing with that? We are attacking. We are similar. Think hump move. We'll, we'll talk about the hump move later. We want to get his body contorted, and we want to get him behind us. We're crossing his face, do that right there. Even though the offensive lineman stays engaged, we're not giving up ground, and bam, we've completely moved him. Violent hands. Get him out the way. Bam, make a tackle. That's the type of thing I want to see. This is a good play from him as a run stopper on that inside. It's good recognition, and it's a good job to see, hey, that guard's pulling. I better follow suit. Get in there. Great job there. Good play. Takes on the center and does a really good job. I like stuff like that. I want to see more stuff like that. I want to see consistency like that. Let's move on to another one. So now you've got him in a three-tech position right over here, just to make sure you all see him. Here's our buddy right here in a three. Bam. The uh, old Sheldon Rankin spot, man. Sheldon Rankin's actually on this team and actually has some really good reps this game. So, let's see what he does this time. Oh, man, that's better, right? That's better. Hands extended. Now, I know some people are going to gripe a little bit, and I'm going to remind you of one thing. Gap integrity. So, comes inside. Where's his gap? He stays in his gap the entire time. So, people are going to say, well, the, the, ran, you know, the runner cut back, and he left his spot. His spot is his gap. And his gap's right here. And even if the line moves, the gap's moving with it. So he's got other guys that are responsible for these gaps right here. You got the end man on the line of scrimmage responsible. His job is this B gap. He's got to monitor the B, trust the C, and allow the D. You heard me right. Allow the D. So I actually like it here. Good job, good power in the hands. Look at the power in the hands. Inside. Got leverage. Push it through, extend, bam. You see that extension he did right there and he's peeking? Now, the only negative to this play is he doesn't have as much control laterally, but it's a good job vertically. Good job, hands, extend. Now he's looking. See, he's looking for the ball. Now his job, maintain gap. Why does he need to maintain gap? Well, if he just busts inside there, well, the running back can come straight up. His job is to maintain this inside gap, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's got three guys that have to do their job to maintain those gaps. And if they don't do it, it's not his fault. So he gets into his gap exactly as he should, fills it up. If the running back would have tried to go that B gap, it's gone. But instead, ends up being this. And then they do stop it, but that's not on him. I liked his job, or I, I really like how he performed on this play. Little things, again, clean up, but good job to extend. He got power, gets inside. He's peeking. He's making sure that he's got the gap. And honestly, if, if he's in this position, he's probably expecting his guy to make the tackle right now. I mean, I, I would probably be expecting it. You're right there for the spot and you missed it. But anyway, 
Let's move on to another one. Now I mentioned before when I said the hump move, well, we're going to talk about it again. Now he's back in the two eye, but I love this one. Ooh. Oh, puts him on his butt here. Let me show you from this angle. Look at this. Look at it. Oh my goodness. Shows the rip comes back with the hump. And this is like one of those plays that when I went through a couple of his games, it stands out. This man is powerful. We're going to write it on the screen power. This man has got it. He's got a lot of it. Watch this move one more time. He's going to show an inside rip, but then it quickly transitions, uses that same rip arm for power, attacks that inside shoulder and puts the center on his ass. Love this. Shows the inside rip, doesn't have an initial success. What do we do? Drive leg, get that arm outside. Look at that curl. It's not like a slap. It's you ripped underneath. You've already got that arm low. Now let's just curl it in and poof, hump him through. Bam, on his ass. Love this. This is one of those plays that makes you go, well, maybe if you weren't convinced before that this guy's got some oof in the NFL, this is an oomph play. Not a lot of guys can throw a 300-pound lineman like this. Inside rip to the outside, does it work? Look at the quick transition. And you see he's not moving his elbow. That's the key here. The rip inside moves the elbow. I, mean, I almost want to get my camera lower to show you. Watch this one more time. I want you to watch his inside elbow. So what you're doing is when you rip inside, your elbow stays inside. He's not moving the elbow. He's just transitioning it. Oh, my gosh. It's beautiful. Watch. Look, look, look. Watch his, uh, his right elbow. Rip. But see how his elbow's not moving? His arm swings out. It's like a gate. But his elbow stays in. Why is that important? Because he's maintaining that control right here, the power of that shoulder, and then bam, pull it up on him. Woo! Oh, I know it's only one rep, but damn, it's a beautiful rep. It's a beautiful rep. He just needs to have more consistent reps like that. But gosh, dang it, that's gorgeous. I mean, if I could have a two-eye doing that or a one doing that all day long, ooh, doggy. All right, let's do another one here. Take a look at another rep. We should be right at, I think I actually went too far past here. Let's go about right here. Yeah, here we are. This is the play we're looking for. Now, this is one where he's shedding that double team, and I like it. Again, those violent hands. Now, he's using kind of an anchor here. He's not using the drop leg technique. He's more anchoring and fighting off, and I'm okay with that. Remember, you want to take the inside guy, split it, does just that. Look, didn't give him any ground, has a solid anchor, took on two guys. And now look at him. Now he's lowering that body. Get a little bit more leverage. Peeking inside to the gap that's his problem. Shed it. Go make it happen. This is a much better job going after the double team or going against double team than what we saw in the first quarter of this same play. So didn't use the drop leg, but that's okay. Powerful hands. We've got one hand attacking inside on that shoulder uh, for the tackle and another on that guard. And then a good anchor here. Solid base gets formed. He didn't need the drop leg. He fights it off here. And this is just mean, disrespectful, just swiping a man's face off like that. That's just awful. Terrible, terrible. Why would you do that? But a good rep. Much better than what we saw earlier on. We'll give you one more before we wrap up. Again, it's, it, he is what he is. He's a two-eye. He's not going to be probably um, the biggest highlight reel, but some good plays to be seen. All right, let's look at this rep real quick. Before we get ready to wrap it on up let me know what you think about these film studies in the comment section below love that rip underneath there pretty solid pass rep here i think that this is one of his better ones he's got several throughout the year that i watched some good ones but this one in particular good swipe rip through solid pass rep i mean you're not getting direct contact you didn't hit the quarterback or anything but technique wise like to see the the ability to do more than just be that guy. And keep in mind that when he's playing with the Jets, he's playing behind multiple DTs in front of him. I mean, 94, uh, no one to slouch at. You had Sheldon Rankins on the same squad. So he was part of the rotational depth on the inside. But good job swiping, rip through, drive up. Love it. A little spin move there at the end. Had that pass not come out, you had that pressure on the outside. I was probably going to push ripping up. The pocket, that little spin move might have ended up being a uh, sack, but ends up getting the ball out. But still, I thought that was a good rip inside. That was a good drive up field. And what you're seeing from this guy is 
Again, you're not seeing world-winning talent necessarily from the first few years. What you are seeing is a good rotational piece that if he can clean up some of the small things, I think you contribute to this team and real curious to see how he looks in camp. I love the power there, man. Powerful hands. If you can combine it with great mental processing, good technique, can really be a good performer in the league. And there are not a lot of guys who could do what we saw on that second to last rep. That, you know, inside rip, transition, pump on through. That was beautiful. I mean, truly, like if I had to give you teach tape on attacking that um, outside and then transitioning real quick and then using leverage with your shoulder, that was just absolutely fantastic. Beautiful rep. Let's see what he can do in New Orleans, and hopefully this video gives you a little bit better view. Support the channel. Check out the merch link. We got Saints merch down there. Remember, one video like this, one film study is not enough to build a scouting report. I went through four games, about 200 snaps require you to do the same thing. Let me know what you think, though, about this player and all in our Discord. That way you can also ask for the next film study to get done. Who that? God bless. We'll catch you on the next one. And hey, go Pels, man. We wrapping them, baby. Four games left in the season. I'm hoping. I'm praying. Ooh, give me that six seed. Please, please, please give me that six seed. Bye. Deuces.